Thank you very much, everybody. I figured you would listen to the whole song. But let's get down to business, right? Let's get down to business. And I want to thank Miriam. This is a great woman, a really great woman who loves Israel, loves the Jewish people. And uh, she's really a special person, so uh, I very much appreciate that she was here to introduce. Thanks also to the Israeli American Council and CEO, my former special envoy to combat anti Semitism, who did a phenomenal job. Where is Mr. Carr? He's around here someplace. Where is he? Great job. Great job. Thank you very much. Co chairs Avi Al Mosleno and Tal Schuster. Thank you. We have the honor of having a very powerful man with us right now. He's the Speaker of the House, and he's really doing a good job, Mike Johnson. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Now, one of the very top people in Congress, she's like a rocket ship. She's going up so fast. She totally destroyed the president of Harvard, you saw, with the big glasses, those big glasses. She asked her a simple question, and that was the end. She didn't get a very good answer. Actually, sounded a little bit like Kamala. <laughs> yeah. But a special, a really special person doing a phenomenal job in Congress, Elise Stefanak. <laughs> That's a pretty good hand. They jumped up. They jumped up. What was that all about, Elise? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Ambassador Michael Herzog. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A friend of mine, a great lawyer, and his beautiful wife is with him, Alan Dershowitz. That was very, very nice. Thank you, Alan. And many other very distinguished guests. I have so many that I can't call because we don't have enough time. We're on television. We're all over the place. And I'm supposed to be calling out names that nobody ever heard of. So we won't do that. But please know that we love you all, including congressmen and senators that are here. We have a lot of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we begin, I just want to mention some polls that just came out. They just came out. Remember, in the old days, I used to call the polls because the fake news would never do it. I said, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. A uh, highly respected Rasmussen poll, one of the most respected polls. According to the Rasmussen, just out a little while ago, we're leading by eight points, 52 to 44. Eight points. And they were very — that's national, and they were very accurate the last time. So we're very, a lot of respect for Rasmussen. And they also have us up 11 with independence. That's pretty good. The Emerson poll came out, another good one, highly respected. We're up in Arizona, we're up in Wisconsin, we're up in Pennsylvania, three states they did. Oh, I don't believe this, I don't believe it. Even the New York Times has us way up in the Midwest. Can you believe that? Oh, would hate. that was painful for them to say. We're nine up in the Midwest, that's very good. And the Atlanta Journal-Constitution has us three up in Georgia, that's good, that's good. And CNN, can you believe this has us? They did Arizona, five up in Arizona. So we're doing well. Daily Express, we're five up nationally battle in the battleground states. So 47 days from now, we're going to defeat Kamala Harris. We're going to take back our country. And we're going to, quite simply, make America great again, right? We're gathered tonight to talk about the sacred bond between the United States and Israel, and it's a bond that's in serious trouble. There's never been anything like it. I believe that we are closer to World War III than at any time in the history of this country since the Second World War. There's never been anything like this period of time that we're going through, and we have leaders that are grossly incompetent. They have no idea what's happening. 
In less than three weeks, we will mark the one-year anniversary of the deadliest attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. On October 7th, Hamas terrorists slaughtered more than 1,200 Israelis, including men, women, children, and even little beautiful babies. They tortured, wounded, kidnapped, and horribly maimed thousands more. What a horrible time. Unthinkable. Could not have happened if I was president. Would not have happened. You know that. Iran had no money. There was no money for terror. 28 terror organizations, including Hezbollah and Hamas, they had no money. There were lots of stories about it. We had no terrorism during the Trump administration. Remember that? Tonight, we honor the memory of all who lost their lives in the October 7th attacks, and we pray to God that Israel will redeem their deaths with ultimate victory over those who wish to destroy it. And we're honored, thank you very much, and we're honored to be joined this evening by several of the victims of the October 7th attack, that horrible, horrible day. Former Hamas hostage Andre Kozlov, who was recused. Yeah. Andre was rescued by the IDF after eight months of very horrible captivity. I can imagine. Where's Andre? Is Andre here someplace? Yes? Yes? He's got more courage than I have. Come on up here. to say something, and he wasn't exactly sure. Say something, Andre. I'm a little bit shy. <laughs> I'm, I'm close to Trump, like, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Thank you so much for this careness, and uh, I really appreciate, appreciate it endlessly. Really. Thank you. He's a good-looking guy. <laughs> also with us is Dedi Simchi, the father of Guy Simchi, who was murdered on October 7th. And uh, I will tell you, uh, that was just a horrible thing, and I've said hello. Could you please stand up? What a great gentleman to suffer like he's suffered. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate it very much. Would you like to come up? We'd love to honor you. Would you like to come up? Come on up. Come on. In honor of your boy. In honor of your boy. Thank you very much. I very, very appreciated what you are doing for Israel, what you did, and what you will done. I hope for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great man. What they've had to endure. Also with us are the parents of several of the current hostages, and hopefully we're going to be getting them back very, very soon. Very, very soon. Thank you all for. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very, very much. What you're going through is uh, very hard to even understand how it could have happened in the first place. Uh, I'd like to ask you just to stand for a second, please, in honor of 
what we're all here for, because we're going to get them out. They're going to come out. Thank you all very much. That's a great group of people. And that's a lot of people, too. We're going to get them out. We're going to get them out. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, we pray for you. And somehow, it's going to work out. We're going to get it to work out. And this evening, we repeat the vow that we have kept in our hearts since the terrible day in October. Never again. Never again. This should never have ever happened. This should never have happened. Should never have happened. Weak leadership in the United States allowed this to happen, and it should never have happened. It would never have happened. It's so sad to see. One year after the horrific massacre, we are instead threatened with a different future, one in which October 7th happens again and again. We have to recognize it again and again. I'm here tonight to deliver an urgent warning to Jewish Americans and to every friend of Israel all around the world. And you have so many Christian friends. They love Israel. So important. I have so many Christian friends. And, you know, when I first started running, I will tell you a story. Maybe I shouldn't, but I, sh I will. <laughs> I was campaigning in 2015 in Iowa in a very Christian area. And there were about 6,000 people. And it was in a church. And they were very religious Christians. And the father, the minister, and a few others were there. And they said, sir, would you please sup say something great about Israel? I said, say it again. Say it again. Because I didn't realize. You know, in the old days, it wasn't like this. I said, if I say something good about Israel, that's not a positive for this particular group, is it? No, sir. If you say something good about Israel, they'll love you. I said, my, 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 have things have changed. How things have changed. Right, Miriam? So I was a little bit circumspect, to put it mildly. And I went out there, and that place went wild, because they liked me right from the beginning. I don't know why. A lot of people have bad taste, I guess. But they liked me right from the beginning. And I said, uh, we love Israel, and we will save Israel, and we will fight with Israel. And the place went wild. I said, what the hell is going on? They love Israel. I hate to say it. Sometimes they love Israel much more than Jewish people in New York love Israel. Alan, Alan Dershowitz knows that. They really, uh, they really do. It's an amazing thing, and that's when it really started, and it was incredible. But uh, you have Christians and evangelical Christians. They love Israel so much, and it's great to see that. It's great to see it. If we continue down our current path with four more years of Kamala, and I don't say Harris because when I say Harris, nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I just said it to another group. You know, Miriam has been working hard here. I have this group, that group, that, but this is the big one, right, Miriam? This is the big one. But don't worry, I said that to the last group also. Now she's got me working hard. But it, it's sort of interesting when you look at what we're doing and how important a mission we're on. If we continue down our current path with four more years of Kamala, Israel will be faced not just with an attack, but with total annihilation. And I hate to say it so much. It's total annihilation. That's what you're talking about. You don't have a protector. You have a big protector in me. You don't have a protector on the other side. And I've said long and loud, anybody, and especially over the last few years, anybody who's Jewish and loves being Jewish and loves Israel, is a fool if they vote for a Democrat. But beyond, beyond that, beyond that, 
If they love Israel, anybody that votes for a Democrat or Kamala, especially because she's this is the worst ever. This is the worst you've ever had. This one makes Barack Hussein Obama look like he loved Israel by comparison. But you should have your head examined because it will face an unceasing bloody war to obliterate the Jewish state and drive Jews out of the Holy Land. That's what they want to do. They want to drive Jews out of the Holy Land. And they are not forgiving people. You found that out on October 7th. By the way, when Trump was president, you had no problems, did you? None. You had no problems. You ever think of that? I wanted to tell Israel that numerous times during the presidency, but I didn't want to do that and then have something bad happen. But nothing bad was going to happen. They didn't have the money to prosecute the war. Nothing was going to happen. We had everything in check, beautifully in check. And by the way, Russia would have never attacked Ukraine either, just so you know. We wouldn't have had inflation. We wouldn't have had that horrible situation in Afghanistan, where we lost 13 great, great soldiers, where $85 billion worth of brand new, beautiful military equipment that I bought, beautiful stuff. I bought and they gave it away. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And we wouldn't have that. We left American hostages behind. Remember that. All of that wouldn't have happened. Think of it. October 7th would have not happened. That wouldn't have happened. And we wouldn't have had inflation. It was started by a stupid oil policy and a spending policy. We would have never had inflation, which has destroyed many families. Let me spell out bluntly the danger of four more years of weakness in this White House. If Kamala is reelected, Iran will quickly obtain nuclear weapons. They're already about ready to do it, okay? And, you know, they were so broke. And I'm not looking to hurt anybody, but they were broke. I had sanctions. Anybody that did any business with Iran could not do business with the United States. I told President Xi of China, if you do business with Iran, if you buy one barrel of oil from Iran, you're not doing any more business with the United States, and I'm going to put on tariffs of 200 percent. And China didn't buy anything. And other countries, likewise, likewise, other countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Iran was ready to do something. They were ready to make a deal. They weren't spending the money because they didn't have the money to spend. And you didn't have a single strike. You had nothing happen during this period of time. It was a beautiful time. Not a single strike. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Iran will, right now, quickly obtain nuclear weapons capable of killing millions and millions of people. Jewish people, non-Jewish people. There's no discrimination with nuclear weapons, you know that. And the power is unbelievable. And I know because I renovated, fixed, and bought brand new nuclear weapons. We have the greatest nuclear stockpile now. But, but I hated to do it because the devastation is nothing. This will be Third World War if it happens, and we're relying on stupid people. If it happens, this will not be two army tanks going back and forth and shooting. This will be, again, obliteration. This could be world obliteration. And we have to get back to common sense, and we have to get back to good leaders that are respected by the other side. Our leaders are not respected by Russia. They're not respected by China. They're not respected by Kim Jong-un of North Korea. They're not respected, frankly, by anybody. From behind this nuclear shield, the regime will be free to unleash its militant terror brigades to turn the Jewish homeland into hell on Earth. They've already started with October 7th. Rockets will rain down from above until the Iron Dome has been exhausted. You know, the Iron Dome is great, but uh, when you send too many, there's not a thing it can do. It's exhausted. It becomes exhausted. They call it that. They want to exhaust, and they send up uh, anything. They send up, they call it garbage into the air. Let them keep sending their missiles up, and eventually they don't have any missiles to protect, and that's when it begins. We can't, we can't do that. Terrorist death squads will conduct constant raids into Israeli territory from all sides. 
going door to door and torturing, raping, kidnapping, and massacring innocent civilians. This is what it is. And you, you know that better than anybody because you've just seen it. A year ago, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem will become unlivable war zones as suicide attacks grind life to a halt. So, as President, I would look at a map of the Middle East, and I'd see a massive, massive piece of land, and I'd see a little dot, just like this stage and that, right at the top. This would be Israel. And I said to Muriel, I said to Sheldon, I said to friends of mine, how can such a big piece of land, I mean, how could this be possible? where you have that little piece of land surrounded by massive numbers of people and soldiers, big armies. Iran has a big army. Big mistake when another administration took out Iraq. You know, you had two for centuries. They would fight each other under different names, under religion, but they were the same strength. And they'd fight and fight and fight, and then they'd relax. And then they'd fight and fight and fight. This went on for centuries. And then somebody who wasn't a very smart person eliminated one of the sides. And the other one was left with nobody to fight. And now the other one basically has Iraq as a subsidiary. And Iraq is very rich, and so is Iran very rich. When I was there, Iran had no money. Now Iran has $350 billion, all made in three and a half years. They took off the sanctions. But Iraq is like a subsidiary of Iran. Don't let anyone ever tell you. And Iraq has over $300 billion. So this is a very rich two nations, and they are essentially one. And they're getting closer and closer all the time. This is a nightmare that should have never happened. Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis. You see the Houthis all over? They've long dreamed of making all of this come true. And if Kamala Harris wins the election, her weakness and incompetence, she's grossly incompetent. Look, she can't do an interview, okay? <laughs> and let me tell you, I won that debate by a lot. By, by a lot. You know, I walked off the stage, I said, Man, did I beat her, even though I was against three people. I kept saying, I, I said, what are you doing here? And you know, the things I said were right. Like I said, we have massive increases in crime. And David Muir said, that's not true. The statistics show that crime is going down. Anybody in their right mind, take a look at what's happening from the border, that we have crime that's worse. I said, you're wrong on that. Crime is going down. Now let's go to the next one. I said, what the hell was that all about? <laughs> I only have one regret, that I wanted to be elegant and I didn't want to attack the anchors, which would have been very easy to do. So I didn't attack them, but I should have attacked them because it was three on one. It's like a basketball game, three on one. It's very hard. But we did well. And you know what? Since the debate, we're getting great kudos because they're analyzing the debate. They say, you know, Trump was right. I was right on everything. She made up all these stories, the bloodbath stories. She made up all of these stories. It's disgraceful. And that's the problem we have. We have a fake media. And so we have to fight harder, and we have to be stronger, and we have to be much smarter. And by the way, Israel and Jewish people are attacked by the media that I can't even believe. The New York Times is controlled by a Jewish family. I don't think there's anybody worse to Israel than the New York Times is. I read articles about Israel that I know are false. The New York Times and plenty of others. So my message today is very simple. If you want Israel to survive, you need Donald J. Trump as the 47th President of the United States. It's a very simple message. Very, very simple. Right? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Under my leadership, America will once again stand shoulder to shoulder with our friend and ally, the State of Israel. Right now, all they do is fight the State of Israel. Don't do this. Don't do that. 
I will support the same people that gave us Afghanistan are telling you what to do, by the way, which every one of those generals should have been fired. You know, I knocked out ISIS in four weeks. It was supposed to take five years. I did it in four weeks. I had great generals. We have the greatest army in the world, but not the people that are on television. These are people that don't know what the hell they're doing. They should have all been fired. I will support Israel's right to win its war on terror, and it has to win it fast. Will you please win it fast? Win it! But you have to win it fast if you can. And I was always — thank you very much. I will always defend Israel's fundamental right to exist as a Jewish nation in the Jewish homeland. That's what it's about, isn't it? But remember this, you're under attack like never before. There's never been a time like this that people can remember. This was a period, they say, if you read it, and I find it very interesting, but this was just before the Holocaust. I think there's a very great similarity, because nobody can believe what's been happening. If Kamala Harris wins instead of the most pro-Israel president ever, which I have been already declared to be, you will have the most anti-Israel president by far, far worse than Barack Hussein Obama. Over the past 12 months, Kamala Harris has repeatedly demanded an immediate ceasefire to save Hamas. She wants to save Hamas. Meanwhile, she and Biden deployed U.S. military to build a $230 million pier to resupply Hamas. The pier didn't work out too well. Every time there was a little rough weather, the thing got ripped apart. Those of you in the real estate business know what I'm going to say. Those contractors made a hell of a lot of money. 230 million every time there's just a little rain. It blew apart. Wonderful job. This was not General Patton's bridge. General Patton knew how to build them. He built them fast and cheap. Kamala Harris has even suggested that she would consider imposing a full arms embargo against Israel and what she wants to do. One thing about politicians, like she wants to defund the police, she wants to do all these things, no fracking, you know, she wants — now she wants fracking. No fracking! There, for 20 years, there will be no fracking. And then she — she's a chameleon. He said, that's true. She just yesterday reaffirmed her support for blocking major arms shipments, as you know, to Israel. She blocked them. If these are our positions Kamala Harris takes before the election, just wait to see what she would do after the election. You won't have a country left. Israel will be doomed. I really mean that. Israel will be doomed. And, you know, I said to Miriam today, I said, you know, they have to go through a little tough love here today because we have to tell the facts. Israel will not exist within two years if she becomes president. And what a difference a president makes. Big difference. Just four years ago, when I left office, the United States and Israel were safer, closer, and stronger than they have ever been before, by far. <laughs> Under my leadership, we totally obliterated the ISIS caliphate. We terminated its founder and leader, al-Baghdadi. I withdrew from the horrendous Iran nuclear deal and imposed the toughest ever sanctions on the Iranian regime. They had no money. They wanted to make a deal. The saddest part, they had no money. They wanted to make a deal. And these guys came in, and they never made a deal. You could have made any deal. But now they're rich again because he took all the sanctions off, and everybody started buying, in particular China. China went from buying nothing under Trump to buying billions and billions of dollars of oil a month. I withdrew from the anti-Semitic U.N. Human Rights Council, which was a big thing. I sanctioned the anti-American and anti-Israel radicals of the International Criminal Court. Many of you know what that meant. That was a big deal. I defunded the Palestinian Authority and choked off all of the money to Hamas. Don't forget, nobody ever did that. I said, how much are we paying them? Almost a billion dollars, sir. I say, they treat us so disrespectfully. They say, death to America, and we're giving them money. Why are we giving them money when they say, death to America? So I said, how much money do we give them? Almost a billion dollars. I said, tell them they're, they're in default. <laughs> You're not supposed to treat us that way when we give you money. 
tell them that uh, they won't be getting money anymore until such time as we make a deal. And I will tell you, we had them very, very close, and then we had an election that really hurt it, and too bad. But we did do the Abraham Accords and other things, but I would have even preferred to do this. We would have had something done. Just as I promised, I recognized Israel's eternal capital and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. Jerusalem became the capital. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. You know, Miriam and Sheldon would come into the White House probably almost more than anybody outside of people that work there. And they were always after. And as soon as I'd give them something, always for Israel. As soon as I'd give them something, they'd want something else. I'd say, give me a couple of weeks, will you please? But I gave them the Golan Heights, and they never even asked for it. You know, for 72 years, they've been trying to do the Golan Heights, right? And uh, even Sheldon didn't have the nerve. But I said, you know what? I said to David Friedman, give me a quick lesson, like five minutes or less on the Golan Heights. And he did. And I said, let's do it. We got it done in about 15 minutes, right? Yeah. 72 years. You know, for 72 years, it's true. Planes would fly in, fly out, fly in. In the old days, they weren't such nice planes. But they'd fly in every year. They'd have a meeting on the Golan Heights. They'd have lunch. They'd have dinner. They'd have this. They'd have that. They'd leave. Nothing would happen, right? And then one day, Trump came along, and it was done very quickly. Four years ago, last Sunday, we signed the historic Abraham Accords. It's a big, a big deal. And secured peace in the Middle East. That was peace in the Middle East, really four very strong countries, and we would have had all of the countries signed. I I'll even make — we would have had, in my opinion — I know this sounds ridiculous — I believe Iran even would have signed because of all of the benefits and all of the trade and all of the other things. I believe that. But we won't get a chance to see that because the four countries are still four countries. Within six months, we would have had just about all of the countries done. Biden and Kamala have done no countries into the Abraham. It's still there with the four, but nothing's been added to it. It's a shame. But from the moment Kamala got to the White House, she and Crooked Joe took over historic successes and turned them into unprecedented failure and peril. You know that. Harris restored funding to the Palestinian organizations immediately, giving them billions and billions of dollars. And much of that money went directly to Hamas. Then Kamala and Joe Biden delivered over $100 billion in sanctions relief, all stuff that I held back. And I would have been very good. They would have been very happy. I wanted one thing from Iran, no nuclear weapon. I didn't want much, no nuclear weapon. And now they're very close to getting it. You can't let that happen. They're very close to getting it. Here at home, Kamala's partnered and just she's partnered with anybody she can. You hear the things coming out of the administration? You hear what they're saying? But she pandered to the Hamas supporters and the anti-Semites in her own party. The things she says, it's not even believable. She said that radical anti-Israel demonstrators at college campuses were, quote, showing what human emotion should be. Oh, that's — isn't that nice? I'm telling you. Israel has no chance. Jewish people that love Israel have no chance. As border czar, which she denies she ever was, but she was the border czar. But even if she wasn't, she was in charge of the border. So what difference does it make? She let in thousands and thousands of terrorists at our southern border, 21 million people, of which thousands of terrorists support. And when I was there, I let in almost none, almost none. They had a chart. That was a very well-known chart. I liked it very much. It's probably my favorite chart of all time. Remember that? I looked to the right. Let me see that chart. I looked. It's my favorite chart of all time. But it showed the great numbers that we had. But one of the numbers that was uh, released recently was that in 2019, one of my years, we — I don't believe this number, by the way. It was done by Homeland Security. I appreciate it, but I don't believe it. I had no terrorists coming into the United States. They had zero. Now we have thousands. So I don't believe the zero, but the number was very low, 10, 12, 5. 
How can it be zero? But they actually have zero. Then I had zero terrorists. So we used to check it, but we had very little. Now we have thousands and thousands of terrorists pouring into our country. It's so sad, and only bad can happen. Only bad, bad things are going to happen. She imported migrants from terrorist hotspots all over the world, and now we have armies of jihadist sympathizers brazenly marching through the streets of our cities. I've never seen anything like it. Where did they come from? How did they get here? Kamala Harris is the candidate of the forces that want to destroy Western civilization. The other day, in fact, it was yesterday, the FBI reported that Iran has spied on my campaign. I'm going to have to hire Alan Dershowitz. Only Alan Dershowitz could do it. <laughs> Iran has spied on my campaign. Think of this. And given the information to Kamala. What's that all about? That alone should get me elected. <laughs> Think of it. Iran got the information from my campaign and gave it immediately to Kamala and the campaign apparatus over on the other side. I'm the candidate of those who want to defend Western civilization, defend Israel, and defend the United States of America. When I return to the White House, we will quickly restore stability in the Middle East, and we will return the world to peace. And remember the phrase, peace through strength. You know, I had no wars for four years. I remember crooked Hillary Clinton. Remember, she was up debating me, and she said, look at him. Look at his rhetoric. He's going to cause wars. I said, no, my rhetoric's going to keep us out of wars. And that's what happened. We had no war for four years, other than I finished off ISIS. No war. First time in 78 years, by the way. Just to brag a little bit, because nobody else is going to say it if I don't. <laughs> Israel will have the support it needs and the powerful ally that it deserves in the United States here at home. I will ban refugee resettlement from terror-infested areas like the Gaza Strip. We will restore the travel ban. Some people call it the Trump travel ban. And keep the radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. That was upheld by the Supreme Court, and it really did work. Again, we had no terrorist attacks into the United States. Think of it. Now I'm talking United States, if that's okay. We had no terrorist attacks for four years. Nothing. Nothing. They knew, don't play games with us. And we will deport the foreign jihad sympathizers and Hamas supporters from our midst. We will get them out. If you hate America, if you want to eliminate Israel, we will throw you out of our country so rapidly your head will spin. them back. They're going to get those beautiful kids in some cases, because they're always your children. You know, they'll say, oh, he said children. No, no, they're always your children. And some older people also, by the way. But we're going to get them back. we got to get them back. We can't let this happen again. So incredible that you're uh, — to, to make the trip so many people, it, it makes me realize how important this is, Miriam, frankly for so many people to make the trip, and there's nothing more important than what you're going through, and there's nothing more important than the people that you love. And it's, it's, it's it will be so beautiful to see it work out well. we got to make it work out well. got to make it. Thank you. And to confront the crisis of anti-Semitism at our universities, I will tell college presidents that they must end the anti-Semitic propaganda or they will lose their accreditation, and they will lose all federal support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the most important election in the history of the United States, and it's also the most important election 
in the history of Israel. Can you imagine that? A non-Israeli election is the single most important election that Israel will ever have. Isn't that something? With all I have done for Israel, I received only 24 percent of the vote. But I understood that. That was in 2016. And, you know, it's one of those things I thought I'd do much better. I happen to have a uh, Jewish daughter. I have a Jewish son-in-law. I have three Jewish grandchildren. I thought I'd do much better. But I only got 24 percent. Think of that. And then I became President of the United States and was the best President ever for Israel and for the Jewish people by far. Nobody was left. I gave them Golan Heights. I gave them the Abraham Accords. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the embassy in Jerusalem. And most importantly of all, I terminated the Iran nuclear deal which was the worst deal ever made in the history of Israel, in the history of the Middle East. I was there four years, gave them billions and billions of dollars. I was the best friend Israel ever had. And still in 2020, now I've done all these things, so now Jewish people have no excuse. I got 29%. I went from 25 to 29 percent. Think of that. And honestly, you didn't treat yourselves well. You didn't. It was a terrible thing. And what made me even more upset about it is the current polling has just been announced. Now, I just announced the polls for — and I'm now polling at about 40 percent. That means 60 percent of Jewish people are going to vote for a Kamala or a Democrat. And honestly, you ought to have your heads examined. You ought to have your heads examined. And those votes may be necessary for us to win. I say us to win because we're in this together. But who are these people? Who are the 60 percent that would vote? And I really believe that bad things, very bad things, are going to happen. And I'll put it to you very simply and as gently as I can. I wasn't treated properly by the voters who happen to be Jewish. I don't know. Do they know what the hell is happening? If I don't win this election, and the Jewish people would really have a lot to do with that if that happens, because at 40 percent, that means 60 percent of the people are voting for the enemy. Israel, in my opinion, will cease to exist within two years. And I believe I'm 100 percent right. You know, there's a hat that comes out, Trump was right about everything, and I believe I'm right. And that's a hell of a thing to say, but I believe I'm right. If I do win, Israel will be safe and secured. We will stop the toxic poison of anti-Semitism from spreading here. All over America, it's spreading. It's spreading like it's never spread before. I've never seen anything like it. I really believe it would be obliteration, and it'll happen quickly, too. It's very close to happening. With your vote, we will reject anti-Semitism in our schools, reject it in our foreign policy. We will reject it in our immigration system. But all of that starts with rejecting Kamala Harris at the ballot box this election. Number one, she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. She doesn't know. She can't do an interview. How do you think she'll do against President Xi? She can't do an interview? And I'm not even saying she's stupid for not doing that, but her handlers know what they're doing. Can't have it. We went through four years of that. We can't go through another four years of that. Together, we will save the United States of America, and we will save the State of Israel on November 5th, 2024. It will be the most important day in the history of Israel. It'll be the most important day in the history of the United States. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. God bless Israel. Thank you.